Welcome to lecture number 14 from actuarialpath.com. In this lecture, we're going to see some properties of expectations and variance, particularly when you have a linear function of a random variable. Let's say we have a random variable x. So x is a random variable, and the expectation of x exists. And we can find it. It's finite. All right? Consider a function g of the random variable x, which takes the following form, a times x plus b, where a and b are constants, constants in the real number system. What we want to do now is find the expectation of the function g of x, the function of a random variable x, which is the expectation of a times x plus B. So this expectation is equal to the constant a times the expectation of x plus b. Let me outline a very quick proof. Alright? Very quick proof. So what we want to find is the expectation of a times the random variable x plus b. So let's for simplicity, assume that x is a continuous random variable. Okay. By the way, this this formula is true for a discrete or a continuous random variable. But for simplicity, let's assume that x is a continuous random variable. And so the expectation is the integral of a x plus b times the PDF of x dx. This is equal to the integral of ax times the pdf plus b times the pdf f of x dx. By the property of integrals, I can write this as a sum of two integrals. So that is the integral of ax f of x dx plus the integral of b times f of x dx. Then what I'm going to do is I can take out the constant a because this is just an integral and you can t you can always take out a constant outside of the integral. a times the integral of x times f of x dx plus b times again the integral of f of x dx. Now if we integrate over all the support of x this integral here is simply the expectation of x. So this is equal to a times the expectation of x plus b times. What is the integral of f of x dx? The integral over all the support of x of f of x dx is 1 by the property of PDFs. This is equal to 1. So b times 1 is simply b. So what we have here is that the expectation of a x plus b is equal to a times the expectation of x plus the constant b. Okay, that's the first thing I wanted to show you. What about the variance of a linear function of a random variable x? Let's consider a random variable x again with a variance with a finite variance. So the variance exists. And also take two constants a and b, which are in the real number system. So this is what I have here. The variance of a constant a times the random variable x plus b is equal to a squared times the variance of the random variable x. Again, I'm going to show a quick proof for this. Now, what is the variance of a random variable? Let, let's just consider a random variable y. Okay? Then the variance of the random variable y, by definition, is the expectation of y minus the expectation of y squared. Quantity squared. Okay? So that's the definition of variance. Let's say y is equal to ax plus b. 
Okay, so the variance of a x plus b is equal to the expectation of I have y minus expectation of y squared. So that's a x plus b minus the expectation of a x plus b quantity squared. Okay, so this is equal to the expectation of um, ax plus b minus what we have seen previously is what? The expectation of ax plus b is a times the expectation of x plus b. So this is a times the expectation of x plus b quantity squared. So this is equal to the expectation of ax plus b minus a times the expectation of x minus b square. Minus b cancels out positive b. So what I have is ax minus a times the expectation of x. So that's the expectation of ax minus a times the expectation of x quantity squared. I can take out a as a common multiplier. So this is the expectation of a squared times x minus the expectation of x squared. All right. If you consider x minus expectation of x squared as a single random variable, then that single random variable is multiplied by a constant a squared. So you can take it outside of the expectation. That is a squared times the expectation of x minus the expectation of x quantity squared. What we know is this is what? That is the variance of the random variable x. So that's equal to a squared times the variance of the random variable x. So what we have is variance of ax plus b is a squared times the variance of x. Let me quickly recap what we did in this lecture. What we did is the following. We said the expectation of ax plus b is a times the expectation of x plus b where a and b are constants, x is a random variable. By the way, also the expectation of a times x is a times the expectation of x. All right, the next thing we did is the variance of a times x plus b is a squared times the variance of x. Also, if you have the variance of a times x, this is again a squared times the variance of x. One more thing, the variance of a constant is zero. So if you have variance of a constant, maybe a or b or c, is zero. Okay, and also expectation of a constant is the constant itself. These will come handy when we do operations of expectations and variances. All right, let's do one or two examples here. Example. The monthly profit of company 1 can be modeled by a continuous random variable with a density function with a PDF given by the following. So that's the PDF. Company 2 has a monthly profit that is four times that of company 1. The question is to find the expected value and the variance of the monthly profit of company 2. Let's say x as monthly profit for company one. Let's say the random variable y is the monthly profit of company two. We know that y is four times x. The question is to find the expected value of y and also the variance of y. Let's start with the expected value. 
the expected value of y is the expected value of 4 times x. Okay? By the property of expectation that we have seen already, this is going to be equal to 4 times the expected value of x. So if we could find the expected value of x, then we could multiply it by 4 and we have the expected value of y. So what is the expected value of x? The expected value of x is the integral from 1 to infinity. 1 to infinity because the support is 1 to infinity. Of x times f of x. f of x is 3 times 3 divided by x to the power of 4 dx. That is equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of 3 times x to the power of negative 3 dx. Use your power rule and that is 3 times x to the power of negative 2 divided by negative 2. You have lower limit of 1, upper limit of infinity. Okay. Now when you compute this you would get a value equal to 3 over 2. So the expected value of x is 1.5. Once you know the expected value of x, the expected value of y is therefore equal to 4 times 1.5 or 3 divided by 2 which is going to be equal to 6. What about the variance of y? The variance of y is equal to the variance of 4 times x. Okay, the variance of a random variable multiplied by a constant is equal to the constant square, which is 4 squared, times the variance of the random variable, variance of x. So this is equal to 16 times variance of x. The variance of x is the second moment, expected value of x squared, minus the first moment, expected value of x, the whole squared. We know the expected value of x, that is 3 halves. Okay, so this is equal to 16 times expected value of x squared minus 9 divided by 4. Alright, so the next thing we do is find the second moment of x. So the expected value of x squared is equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of x squared times f of x, which is 3 divided by x to the power of 4dx. And that is equal to 1 to infinity of 3 times x to the power of negative 2 dx. Use the power rule again and you would have 3 times x to the power of negative 1 over negative 1. Lower limit 1, upper limit infinity. And this gives you a value equal to 3. So expected value of x squared is 3. So the variance of y is equal to 16 times 3 minus 9 divided by 4, which is equal to 12. So we have the expected value and the variance of y. Okay, thank you for watching. The next lecture is going to be about moment generating functions.